I think the reason that Slingshot and VWC go so well together is just that we've been together since day one. So I literally met Quinn, uh, we went to the same college, but the first time I met him, he was winching in a, this like creek under the, it's like near the railroad tracks in Valdosta, and I walked up, and uh, we had a mutual friend, and then like, that was the first pull in, swings out, that's like introduction to Quinn Silvernail, and then turns out we live like 100 feet apart in the dorms at Valdosta State once we got back to school and like realized like, we're all into the same kind of stuff. Quinn had a lake house, so we would always go up there and ride together. And then we all end up moving together, uh, moving in together, uh, roommates for like three or four years in college. That's when we started kind of working on the whole business plan and uh, formulating a plan to do all that. And then once we graduated, it still took us about a year to get financing and then slept on couches and floors and, you know, started the 2.0. Weirdly, pro like probably the old park, like the 2.0, when I think about it, it's probably like maybe one of the first team trips where everybody came to the park. We were still at the front lake with the two, two towers. It was, that was like kind of the trip where everybody else realized that we weren't full of shit about what was like going to happen out here. And like, that's kind of, when I think of those two together, I always like envision that old wall ride and like the barrel rail and stuff and just kind of like all the, all the riding that happened on that trip. It was like really the first time that we got to kind of have like a collective crew from Slingshot all here. And there was enough going on to where like we could drive back to this property, which was just dirt and had like, we had dug like one stretch of the cable but there was like something there. So everybody finally, I feel like, kind of believed that something cool was gonna happen. But before that, it was kind of like, I, I, I felt like when I would talk about what we were gonna do here, everyone was just kind of like, yeah, we'll believe it when you see it. Remember, no matter how many times you shake and dance, the last two drops stay in your pants. Pee, bag! <laughs> Okay. Oh, you ain't gonna come in now? She just knock at the door relentlessly, bro. Come on, he ain't we're doing the interview. I mean, I really just, I've been kind of just cruising around to wherever the getting's good, you know? At Trophy, I was there when the getting was good, and then it kind of, the vibe went south and I just bailed. Yeah. Did the same thing at Jib, was there during its heyday, and then shit started going south, all right, I'm out. And that's when I planned my first trip out of the country to the Philippines. And I guess during Jib, my relationship with Slingshot was growing and getting better. For the Philippines, that was the first thing that they bought for me, like they paid for my plane ticket. And I was like, that's huge, <laughs> you know? I was like so hyped. I bought my ticket linked up with Wes just because I'd seen on, on his Instagram and stuff that he was going. And uh, we actually met up in the airport and like we only were like friends, you know, through social media pretty much at that point. And we filmed like a little mini movie out there, Dose to Buy, which was hype. I still watch it to this day. It was, it was a good one, you know, spent a lot of time on that edit. That was like really the, the intro to our friendship kind of like we were already we were already friends and like acquaintances. I would say we're more than acquaintances, but hadn't really like hung out until that point. I got back from Philippines and then I moved back to Charleston. And then I was planning on going to Blake's spot in Atlanta because they hit me up and they needed a like kind of park guy and someone to help film and edit with Blake and build rails. And so I packed up all my stuff put it in my truck, 
but I was stopping through Valdosta because Quinn had told me about this park that he's building. Like in the Philippines, he's like telling me like this park that he's building and it's gonna be the sickest park in the world. Like, but at the time it was just like a mud pit, you know, at the back of the property. And something happened to where they didn't need him to come up that year and he had already packed his car and already came to Valdosta first. And uh, we were, I think me and Wes were actually building the little out, the out pipe on the end of this pool gap that is now that silver handrail. And we like knocked it out in a day and he was also like in the midst of that, getting all this info that he wasn't gonna be needed at Blake's house. And I was like, why don't you just like stay here? And he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, you just stay here. And then Quinn was just like, well, you know, you can stay here in one of our campers until you figure it out. And then, damn, I was here staying in the barracks for like a month or something and just having the best time ever, helping them build and film. And, and it was like, it kind of just like clicks in. And I was like, damn, like th these are my people. Something about the squads and the crews just, you know, is always more powerful than the individual. Yeah, I think it was kind of like, let me think of exactly how it went, but we were all really like, the reflex was the board that we all wanted. And like, we were just kind of pushing to get something going. And at, at a certain point we were like, well, neither one of us is probably gonna get a pro model, like individually. But if we like team up, Shredtown probably paved the way for that thought process because they had the group pro model, you know? After the coalition, it was just like, me and Quinn kind of saw the opportunity as like, we're, we're kind of like, we're kind of like one, you know? As like being from the same park and riding the same board and loving Slingshot and we we're both riding for Steez and like, we were like, damn, it's like, it'd be pretty hard for both of us to get a pro model. So we're like, well, let's fucking, you know, let's team up because we're already a team. So it's like, let's try to get a pro model together. We started talking about it. And I think um, Derek from Biwake really helped a lot too because he believed in what we were doing and was like, dude, if he's like, if it'll help Slingshot's perspective on it, I will buy the first 25 Wes and Quinn boards, which at the time we didn't have a name for. Wes drew up the graphic as always, and we kind of discussed like the direction we were going with it and everything. And the coalition name pretty much just came from like, this is what we're known for already. So what about the coalition? And Jeff seemed super hyped on it and everyone else. And then uh, once we actually got those limited boards out, they sold out really fast. And it just did really well with the graphic and and then that just, I mean, I feel like that's kind of Slingshot's way of like, if you're gonna get a pro model, you kind of get a LTD first and they run it and see how your name does and which makes sense, that's smart business. And then yeah, it did great, you know, it did great, sold out fucking quick. So then, so then we earned our pro model and now we're on number four. Yeah, all of this stuff is, is cool and we, it's kind of what we always envisioned, but like, as far as like me and Wes and riding for Slingshot and where we're at with the company now, it's like without Slingshot and their support, this probably wouldn't be what it is because I don't think anybody else would have believed in it. They just have done so much from the very beginning with this place, you know, and like those little things like that are what really paved the way for, for Valdosta weight compound, Space Mob, the Coalition, like all that stuff, like Slingshot's at the root of all of it. Like if we didn't have Slingshot boards, 
supporting us, we probably wouldn't even ride wakeboards anymore because it's so good. They've done so many things that has pushed wakeboarding in a positive direction. And I think honestly, the biggest reason that they're so sick is because the owners actually are involved in these things. Like, like Tony Lagoche goes and rides Hood River every day on a foil kiteboard. Always, he's, he's always kiting somehow, some sort of kite mechanism. The wind is always blowing that man around. The fact that they still have that like youthful energy and like stoke, having genuine stoke goes a long way, you know? Oh my God. You, you good? Oh man, I thought you were about to go head first into that ramp. But yeah, I think that that genuine stoke just like, if you have something like shredding or boarding, whatever it is, if you have something that keeps you stoked, even if you're not involved in the other side, like the wakeboarding as much, you take the opinions of the people like me and Wes and Dylan and Alex and all the, all the guys on the team, you take their opinions really seriously because they're just a different version of you. If you're like getting out there and getting it every weekend and you know, trying new things and testing stuff out, pushing yourself. So we really lucked out. Somehow it was like a perfect fit, but it was a long road to get here. But thankfully, Slingshot has always been so sick and helped make this place what it is today. And we'll continue to do so because we're not stopping anytime soon. That's for sure.